Welcome back, Pipers. Hobbit and Piper Kevin here, coming to you from the heartland of America in Missouri. Welcome back to my kitchen. I'm going to be cooking some ribeyes today, so I thought I'd go ahead and record it. This can be a part of our good food, good drink part of the channel, and I'm going to show you how I cook ribeyes. So before we get started, let's go get a good drink, because you know I can't cook without a good drink. Let's see what's in the fridge. Ah! So these just came out. Have you ever had? Yes, I'm barefoot, by the way. I'm a hobbit. Have you ever had Samuel Adams Oktoberfest? These just hit stores here in Missouri. Uh, they usually come out late August, and then they'll be around till they sell out very early November. So this just came out. I picked up a six pack, and let's give it a try. Where's my bottle opener? I don't think these twist off. No. All right. Cheers to the first Oktoberfest of the year. Mmm. I really like this one. Okay. Now, at some point, I will cook fillets with you. And I'll show you how I prepare I, how I prepare a fillet, but today I'm going to prepare these ribeyes, and really you don't have to do anything to them. You could literally just put them on the grill like they are, and it would be great. But I'm going to try this just smoky dry rub that I have, and I'm going to put that on both sides. I'm not even going to put any oil down on these because ribeye is such a fatty cut of meat that. It usually has plenty of natural oils on it to hold the seasoning, and I don't think we're going to need to put any oil on this. So let me just read you what's in this, though. In this seasoning I'm putting on it, this has got sea salt, dehydrated onion, it's got roasted garlic, cane sugar, black pepper, chili pepper, cumin, celery seed, thyme, red pepper, coriander, rosemary, paprika, canola oil is in this. I mean, this is some good stuff, I think. So let's try it. And I'm just gonna sprinkle this on liberally because this is gonna help just make a crust on the outside of our ribeyes when we go sear them out on the grill. So I'm just gonna put this on really liberally all over both sides. Just like that. And then I'm going to flip them and do the same thing on the other side. I remember my mom watched me do this one time. She said, oh, Kevin, that's way too much seasoning. I'm like, no, you got to trust me, Mom. Because my parents never used much seasoning <laughs> when they were cooking things. I said, you got to trust me. This is just going to make a crust on the outside. It's not like, it's not what you think. <laughs> she ended up liking it pretty well. Okay, this is what they look like right now, super simple. And then I'm going to get the grill ready. I'm gonna get that grill all the way up above 500 because what we're gonna do is we're gonna sear these. I like my ribeyes medium rare, medium. So we're gonna just sear these on both sides and turn them for some grill marks. I'll show you all that outside. Now, if you want crisscross marks, you got to turn them at this point, like this. Now that we've got them seared, I'm going to move them up to the top just to let them 
cook a little bit more. Really at this point it becomes a matter of experience. You just have to know exactly how you like your steak so that you know when to take it off. But I think the grill marks came out great. I am a sucker for butter, so I'm going to put a little bit of butter on the top of each one after I take them off and then cover them in aluminum foil for five minutes to let them rest. I also wanted to show you that I did pick up a Pinot Noir. This is that Prophecy brand that I like. It's just a low to mid range wine that are available here in our local supermarkets. but. This is a Pinot Noir 2019. I like the artwork on these labels. <laughs> and this will go good with the ribeye.